Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson of Fairwinds. Nuclear containment systems were designed and built as the last line of defense to protect the public from radiation releases after a nuclear accident. During the first week of the triple meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi site, it was obvious that all the General Electric Mark I boiling water reactor containment systems failed to operate as designed. They did not contain radiation. Since the Fukushima Daiichi tragedy occurred almost three years ago, Fairwinds Energy Education has discussed the issue of containment failure many, many times. For a detailed explanation of the Fukushima containment failures, please see the speech I gave on March 11, 2013 to the New York Academy of Medicine. The link is on the site right below this video. Two weeks ago, Tokyo Electric released some strange data claiming that they had discovered a new leak in the containment system on Fukushima Daiichi Unit 3. First, what do we know about this leak from TEPCO's own information update? TEPCO stated that a robot inside Fukushima Daiichi Unit 3 detected a water leak. The water was viewed on the robotic cameras and it was a stream, it was about a foot wide and it was running across the floor of Unit 3. TEPCO then measured the temperature of the water at 20 degrees centigrade or 68 Fahrenheit. And because the air temperature was 7C or 42 Fahrenheit, the water, which was more than 20 degrees hotter, obviously this could not be rainwater. Next, TEPCO measured the water's radioactivity level and found that the water stream was highly radioactive. TEPCO now believes this could not be rainwater simply because it's warm and highly radioactive. Let's be clear about the technical forensics here. Temperature is not a reliable litmus test for the stream of water. Rainwater could have fallen and risen in temperature due to contact with hot surfaces. The same is true with the radioactive content. Since Unit 3 had radioactive material explode far and wide, and because TEPCO has yet to begin the cleanup of the radioactive debris inside the containment, the rainwater could have come and picked up radioactive contamination that has spread throughout Unit 3's containment system. In nuclear power plant operations, any pathway for rainwater to get inside a nuclear reactor is also a pathway for significant amounts of radioactivity to leak outside into the surrounding water and air. The news released by TEPCO that the rainwater could be leaking inside Unit 3 is a clear admission that Unit 3's containment system is compromised and it's leaking radioactivity into the surrounding water and air. That we know for sure. Second, because the stream was warm and radioactive, the water leaking in Unit 3 either came in contact with radioactive debris spread throughout Unit 3, or it's leaking from the water that cools the nuclear core within the reactor itself. Remember, even now, almost three years after the triple meltdown, TEPCO is adding four tons of water every hour into the containment system and into what remains of the nuclear reactor core to keep the nuclear fuel cool because it's highly radioactive and physically hot nuclear fission products that remain from the chain reaction that ended three years ago. Third, clearly there are even more problems with TEPCO's analysis of this Unit 3 leak. Where did this leaking come from? TEPCO claims that the leak is flowing from a room that contains main steam isolation valves. These are huge valves designed to close after an accident. It's impossible for water that cooled the nuclear reactor to leak from this location. Let's look at a sketch of a Mark I BWR containment system to determine why it is impossible. The containment is inside a box. That building is called a reactor building. This is the same building that exploded at Unit 3 shortly after the triple meltdown began at Fukushima. Inside that box-like building is the containment system. 
and it looks like it's an upside down light bulb connected to a donut. The containment system began to leak as hydrogen gases increased in pressure and the bolts on the lid began to stretch. You can see this in a graphic Ferrins developed in 2011 to describe this phenomena. The containment system meant to protect the public was breached on the very first day and gases leaked out into the surrounding environment. Within three days of the Fukushima catastrophe, Unit 3 blew up. Next, the seals around the electrical wires in the pipes that enter the containment also failed. These seals are made of rubber and they're made of plastic and they're not designed or fabricated to withstand the high temperatures, the high pressures, or to be in contact with salt water from the ocean that was used to keep the core cool as the accident progressed. Furthermore, the failure of the rubber and the plastic seals is facilitating the leakage of radioactive water into the surrounding groundwater and the environment. Finally, the nuclear core that has melted through the thick nuclear reactor and the reactor coolant pumps have also failed. So whatever water reaches into the reactor flows out onto the floor and never ever touches the main steam piping, as TEPCO claims. Now, these leaking seals in the containment are what establish the water level inside the containment. The four tons per hour that are pumped in runs right back out. Let's look at a graphic that compares the location of the leak with the water level inside the containment. This drawing shows that the water level inside the containment is much lower than where TEPCO claims the new leak was found. And we all know that water does not flow uphill. Even more perplexing is the fact that the radioactivity in the leaking water is 100 times less radioactive than the water normally found in the basement of the containment. But it's 100 times more radioactive than the water currently being pumped in to cool the molten remains of the nuclear core. So the question is this. What is really happening at Fukushima Daiichi Unit 3? Since there were so many variables, Ferenc is not going to speculate on the source of what the water leakage is today. But the data shows that TEPCO does not know the source and is only guessing that it might be rainwater and that it might be coming from the main steam isolation valves. For me and other nuclear engineers with whom I consult, this is not a good sign for Fukushima Daiichi site, its surrounding environment, or for the people of Japan, because it proves once again that TEPCO is not in control of the situation at the severely contaminated Fukushima Daiichi site. We can conclude that TEPCO does not know if the cooling water on the way to the reactor got sidetracked onto the floor, or if the warm water leaked onto the floor after cooling the reactor, or if the water came from inside the containment, or even if it came from outside the containment. Three years after the worst industrial catastrophe in the history of the world, TEPCO and the Japanese government still do not have control of the site and the radiological effluents contaminating the surrounding water table, the nearby ocean, or escaping into the air and blowing in the wind. A colleague of mine said that in CSI Fukushima, if there was such a TV show, technicians would collect and analyze samples of water from the reactor floor and from the process pipes and the holding tanks and the vats. The radiological and chemical analysis from these water samples could eliminate many of the possibilities of where the water is coming from and sharpen the focus on the real culprit of the extensive leakage, just like blood typing and DNA tests are performed to target criminals in CSI. I agree with my colleague. TEPCO must think more like CSI Fukushima and less like a bystander in this catastrophe that they and General Electric created by building and operating these Mark I boiling water nukes. I'm Ernie Gunderson, and I'll keep you informed.